In another case of shooting in the United States, at least about five people were shot outside of a supermarket in Seattle. The incident was reported on Friday in Seattle's Rainier Beach neighborhood. And out of the five injured, one person is said to be in a critical condition. And according to local media reports, dozens of bullets were fired during the incident in the area. Although there are no reports of any casualties that have been reported. The police at the moment are on the lookout for at least about two suspects. An Australian Army chopper crashed into the waters of the coast of Queensland. Four crew members are feared dead following the crash and reports suggest that search and rescue operations for the crew are still ongoing. The crash has brought the biennial Australia-US military drill to a standstill. The chopper, which was airborne as part of the drill, went down close to Hamilton Island. The MRH-90 Tarpon helicopter ditched into the waters on Friday. A Russian missile strike on Ukraine's central city of Dnipro has injured at least about five people. The missile struck a residential complex and a building belonging to Kiev's security service. Now, the emergency services completed an apartment-by-apartment apartment search of the area following the shelling. Now, the attack happened just a day after the Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky, had visited the southeastern city to meet with the military commanders. The top agenda of the meet was centered around battlefield discussions, strengthening Kiev's air defense and also mapping out supplies for the troops. The American Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and the US Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin met their Australian counterparts, Foreign Minister Penny Wong and Defense Minister Richard Marlis. The meeting comes as part of the annual ministerial dialogue that is being held in Brisbane. However, this is the first Australia-US ministerial meeting since 2019 due to the COVID pandemic and progress on a deal for the US to sell nuclear-powered submarines to Australia remains the top focus. The discussions around regional security and clean energy will also take place. However, talks were overshadowed after an Australian air defence chopper crashed into the waters near Queensland with at least about four people feared dead. And the United States will assist Australia in producing guided multiple launch rocket systems by 2025. This comes as both the nations have pledged to engage with China but also oppose it if necessary. According to Defence Secretary Lloyd Austin, the United States will be speeding up Australia's access to priority ammunitions. And Austin, the Secretary of State Anthony Blinken are in que Queensland State for the annual Australia-US Ministerial Dialogue with their Australian counterparts. They aim to establish a guarded weapons and explosive ordnance enterprise in Australia and are expecting to begin missile manufacturing within the next two years. French President Emmanuel Macron met with his Sri Lankan counterpart Ranul Vikramasinghe during a brief overnight stopover in the South Asian nation. The Macron made the stopover after visiting Papua New Guinea, New Caledonia and Vanuatu. The Macron's visit was the first one by a French president to the island nation. And according to the state media, this meeting focused on shared regional and global challenges, as well as debt restructuring strategy involving the two countries. And migrants continue to cross the Rio Grande River to reach the United States. This despite the floating barriers installed by the state of Texas to deter them. The Republican Governor Greg Abbott's initiative, Operation Lone Star, aims to prevent migrants from crossing into Texas from Mexico. Now, Operation Lone Star also includes deployment of National Guard troops and a controversial campaign to transport migrants to the Democrat-led cities further north. 
but this has faced legal challenges from the US Justice Department. The implementation of a new asylum policy by President Biden in the month of May has led to a decline in the number of migrants caught crossing the US-Mexico border illegally. Shiite Muslims in India's Kashmir Valley took part in processions to mark the day of Ashura. The Ashura, which falls on the 10th day of the month of Muharram, commemorates and in fact is a day of remembrance for the martyrdom of Prophet's grandson Imam Hussein. The mourners rode the boats in the iconic Dal Lake while being dressed in customary black. The elegies were chanted by the people and this, of course, filled the streets of the city's capital, Srinagar, amidst heavy security arrangements. The procession was held for the first time in over 34 years after the authorities lifted a 1989 ban. At the Russia-Africa summit that took place in St. Petersburg, African nations have pressed the Russian president to end Ukraine's war and to renew a deal that is crucial for Africa on safe wartime export of Ukrainian grain, which Moscow tore up last week. But they also served as reminders of the depth of the African concern and the consequences of the war, especially due to the rising food prices. The South African President Cyril Ramaphosa insisted that the African leaders had travelled to St. Petersburg to advocate for peace in Ukraine and to reopen the Black Sea for trade and not to plead for donations of grain to the African continent. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un met with a Chinese delegation which visited Pyongyang to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the end of the Korean War. Now, Kim Jong-un has vowed to develop ties with China to a new high. Now, the visiting Chinese delegation was led by the Communist Party Politburo member Li Hongzhong, who handed over a letter from President Xi Jinping to the North Korean leader. The delegation also held a meeting with other North Korean officials. Russian President Vladimir Putin took aim at Western nations over the situation in Ukraine. He told the African leaders that the West, in fact, had proved and provoked the ongoing war between the two nations. Now, Putin also quoted the African leaders at the summit, hailing the continent's growing role in global affairs. Moreover, Moscow also offered to expand political and business ties with South Africa at the summit. The U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin called on Russia to abide by the laws of the sky. While being at it, he also urged for Russia to cease its irresponsible behavior in the skies. The statement followed after a Russian fighter jet member had hit a U.S. drone with a flare earlier in the week. The U.S. MQ-9 drone was, or Syria, was severely damaged by Russian military aircraft. Now, U.S. officials have shown concern over the increased pace of dangerous encounters between the two countries in recent months. The American Secretary of State Anthony Blinken called for the immediate release of the ousted Niger President Mohamed Bazoum. The Blinken has also urged for the restoration of democratic order in the country. The Bazoom has been dethroned in what came as the seventh military takeover in a span of less than three years. The country is a key partner in Washington's fight against Islamist insurgents in the region. In fact, the U.S. military personnel have been training local forces to fight militant groups in the Sahel region. In a heartwarming tribute to love, Lee Wilson, a local farmer, gifted an astounding 1.2 million sunflowers to his wife. The Lee decided to sow a vast expanse of sunflowers for his wife as an anniversary gift. Lee, with the help of his son, secretly planted the field back in the month of May, ensuring that it would be a delightful surprise for Rene. When Rene saw the flowers, she was deeply moved and touched. 
and said that there could not have been a more perfect anniversary gift for her. That the sunflower field has become a magnet attracting visitors from all corners of Kansas who come to witness the state of flowers in full bloom. There has been a dramatic increase in the number of whales off Ilha Bella's coast. Experts say that many of them now return to their original breeding grounds all along the Brazilian coast, where they used to be killed earlier for their blubber. The Julio Cesar Cardozo's founded a project in 2015 that involves spotting of whales, known as citizen scientists. Volunteers of this project use photographs to collect information on the number of marine mammals in Brazil. And as per experts, the work of citizen scientist volunteers is extremely helpful as a lot of conservation projects are underfunded and lack resources. Ottawa was hit by an intense deluge of hail with large fragments of ice falling in the Canadian capital. The storm caused substantial damage to the area, leaving at least about 10,000 people without power. Now, the nation's meteorological agency has, had earlier issued a severe thunderstorm warning, forecasting hail and winds of up to 90 km per hour. Videos and photographs posted on social media showed hailstones, roughly the size of a golf ball, raining down on the people. But there were no reports of injuries in either city. Recovery efforts are presently underway in southern China after Typhoon Doxuri swept through the region and unleashed heavy rains and strong winds. In the Fujian province, 35 villages were rescued from the floodwaters reaching depths of up to about 2 meters. And according to the local media, emergency workers are clearing large trees that have been uprooted from roads and rescuing local residents who have been stranded in the floodwaters. The Doxuri's wind speed has been downgraded to that of a severe tropical storm, but its massive rain bands are still expected to arc as far north as Beijing. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.